So that is the Google site speed, which is looking great. Today, I'm gonna to take you on the first leg of my journey towards a thousand blog posts in one year in a highly competitive niche. We've almost done 200 blog posts so far, and it's been less than two months. So I'll include my processes, the financials, and the hopes of this expensive experiment. The website is gaining traction and we're ahead of schedule, but before I get into the details, let me first give you background on why I started this project. So I've been in the SEO space for about 15 years. I started in high school developing websites in Dreamweaver, HTML, and then what seems like a flash of time, I started an SEO agency helping businesses across the nation gain visibility online, eventually global businesses, etc. During this time, I also went into the family business of insurance, which I've done close to 10 years now. I'm a licensed insurance agent. I own an independent insurance agency where we help people with things like car and home insurance, uh, life insurance, any kind of insurance for the most part. So fast forward to the end of 2022. Do you remember this? When Google released their helpful content update and the adjoining double EAT emphasis. During this time, websites were shaken up. Some lost tons of traffic and there was theories upon theories on why websites were taken. Um, and there was one common thread that I saw. Does the author or the owner of the website have the trust of Google? Do they have experience, expertise, authority? Do they have the trust of Google? So this eventually prompted me to begin my insurance project, Bopple, with the goal of a thousand blog posts in 2023, leveraging the expertise and experience I have in this highly competitive niche to see if I can take everything I've learned in the SEO world and the insurance world and move the needle on Google search results. So this is a super competitive niche. It's up there with credit cards. It's up there with banking and crypto and other things, but it's also very lucrative for those who can get to the top of search results. So why not give it a try? So fast forward again from the start of January to almost the end of February. Now we've done 181 blog posts. We have a legitimate brand that is gaining authority through backlinks and content hubs. And hopefully this trend, this upward trend continues. So let's jump into what we've done and how we've gotten to where we are. So let's talk about how and why I chose the domain name for this project. Ultimately, I fell into bopple.com. It's a one word domain with few characters, which all lend to an easily recognizable brand. Um, if I ever wanted to sell this in the future, it doesn't mean anything specific to anyone. It's just like Apple. It's Bopple. It's just, it technically is a, is a small town in Australia, but we'll get into that. So I wanted to purchase an aged domain that had some backlinks, but nothing too crazy. When I found Bopple.com, it was available for $40. I got it on expireddomains.net. I made sure there was nothing weird in the way of the way back machine history, the archive.org, that would be considered spammy or black hat. That's the last thing I wanted was some problem website. I didn't want to purchase an aged domain that had problems associated with it. I wanted to purchase an aged domain to help expedite this process. So doing this research, it uncovered that the domain was used for a small town in Australia. It was a small community website named Bopple. Uh, eventually it shut down, it shut down naturally. They even had a post on there that we are just shutting this website down um, for whatever reason. So it was available for purchase uh, years later, and that's what I did. So nothing out of the ordinary there. I went ahead and locked down the, uh, the domain and through freelancers and Upwork specifically, I was able to convey a general concept on what I wanted for the brand and get a great look and logo, as well as a great color palette. Uh, for the web developers to work on. Now, keep in mind that's coming from someone who's partially colorblind. I think it looks cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, to this point so far, the project, I've spent $350 all in, including the domain and the brand design. So not bad. The next step in the process was to build out the website. I knew I wanted to use WordPress as it is the best at scaling a content website. We're gonna do a thousand blog posts. WordPress is our best bet. On top of that, I knew I needed a super fast website. And if I were to compete in this highly competitive niche, I knew WordPress was probably my best bet on that too. So I chose Astra as the underlying theme of my website opposed to doing a 100% custom theme. Our in-house designer was able to make a few tweaks here and there, uh, but nothing too major. Once the design was in place and good enough for our developer, they came behind and tightened it all up. Good to go. I will say one of the best things that I like about Astra, Pro Astra theme, is the ability to have custom CTAs or call to actions based upon categories and tags. 
This helps with content hubs and streamlining stream. This helps with content hubs and streamlining that process, allowing us to easily find links uh, from supported articles to tier one articles and so on. On top of that, it's known as one of the fastest and most lightweight themes available on WordPress. Like I said, I use their pro version, but they have a free one too that I've used and it's great. So the total cost for this, because we used a theme uh, instead of doing a custom design was $1,000. So the previous step cost 350, this cost 1,000. So we're all in about 1350 at this point. Now for the fun part, what are we gonna write about? How are we gonna write it? And how can we make it affordable to be a sustainable idea? This is the tricky part. So we have in-house writers who do a great job. Their articles, in my opinion, are second to none in the industry, and I'm very proud of them. But to write a thousand articles at an average size of 1,500 words would cost us uh, 150 to $400,000. And not only that, our workload is already tight as it is. We're servicing clients around the world with content every day, so it isn't feasible economically or time-wise to do it the conventional way. So enter AI, enter ChatGPT. And I know a lot of people are probably moaning about the tool right now and how it hallucinates and its information isn't perfect and so on. And all these things are true, but we've found a way to incorporate it into the initial framework in of creating articles to not only expedite our process, but also make it affordable. Ultimately, this website, bobble.com, is a grand experiment. I love listening to Kyle Roof He's a great SEO and his team because they believe in testing and experimenting. And that's exactly how I see this project. It's an overpriced experiment that has the potential to go well, but regardless, we can all learn from it. If nothing else, my team will have learned tons of lessons that translate to servicing our clients better. So the exact process of creating content for our website varies, but usually it begins with someone interfacing with ChatGPT to give it specific prompts and questions based upon article outlines. But let's back up for a second. Even before we begin creating any content, any words on the screen, our team creates content hubs. At this point, we've created a content hub for car insurance with about 100 articles and a sales and marketing content hub with about 150 articles. The next hub we are working on has 250 articles and all of these blog posts have already been mapped out based upon content structure. I'm sure you've seen other SEOs talk about. The basic concept is that there are tiers of articles. Tier one articles being the most important. Everything under a tier one article is considered a supported article for a specific upline or higher tiered article. It's a web of articles that all support each other in some way or fashion. We interlink all of them through a very uniform process while allowing for you know sporadic natural internal links as well as needed. Once we have our basic layout, we begin our content creation method. The first step is to create an outline for the article. There are different ways to go about this. There are tools you can use such as Content Harmony or other AI-driven processes, but ours is more granular, it's more easy. I'll have another video in the future detailing how we create content for this, but for the sake of time in this video, our content process involves at least four people on each article, each person responsible for sharpening the article to a point the process ends with me taking the draft format of the article on the website, so it's already on WordPress at this point, ready to be published, but I go through, I revise it, I review it, and post it live. Every weekday, you know, business weekday, I post four blog articles, and the total amount of time it takes me is about an hour and a half. So regarding off-page SEO and backlinks and things like this, to kickstart our website, I've chosen to treat it like any other real business because that's what it is. We are investing a lot of time, we're investing money and effort, and Google and consumers see us as a business, so why not treat it like one? With that said, I've taken to identifying local sponsorship opportunities in my area, the same office location listed on the website. I have a video on this, how exactly how I identify local sponsorship opportunities. Uh, it's not terribly hard, and they're surprisingly affordable for the type of domain authority they can offer. I know they are not niche relevant backlinks, but at least they signal to Google that this is a real business doing things in the local community. Um, I also joined the local Chamber of Commerce for that reason. It's $325 a year, but it's worth it in my books. On top of that, we are considering using Web 2.0 websites as brand supplements. Maybe they'll have some SEO effect, maybe not. I'm mostly building those out to protect the name of Bopple as a brand 
for any future needs. We've also had a lot of success with Haro. Um, our team is very good at responding to queries in a concise manner to earn accreditation in larger insurance websites and publications. I think uh, to this date, we have four backlinks in the last month, all from reputable sites that are technically competitors to us. Um, on top of that, we are building relationships with these journalists and editors through the process, which who knows, it may lead to future opportunities. So something else I did to further our double EAT is that I created a YouTube channel for Bopple. I consider this an experiment within the experiment uh, for a specific cluster of topics I did. Uh, I created a join in YouTube videos that are embedded into each post. Um, unfortunately, I don't have enough subs to have the hyperlinks from my descriptions on the YouTube channel push out as backlinks or no follow links or what have you. Um, but I can say the cluster that I did on YouTube um, is by far the highest impressions on the website by a factor of two or three. So maybe this is because they are some of the earliest articles we've written, uh, or maybe because the YouTube tactic really works. Uh, I think as time goes on, this will become more clear. I've paused this idea because of a time constraint. It costs between two and $300 a week to do this between me and the editor, but it mostly cost my time, which was why I stopped it. I wanna see if this actually moves the needle uh, before pressing into it any further. Now, before we get into the results so far, uh, I wanna talk about my plans for future monetization on the website. So overall, I imagine this, this experiment, this overpriced expensive experiment is gonna cost between 30 and $50,000 in 2023. Um, but there are three main ways we plan to monetize the website eventually. Number one being display ads. Hopefully we can get onto Mediavine um, with 50,000 and above monthly viewers. We also plan to have affiliate links for specific products such as insurance CRMs and things like this. And we also have our own products, which is a huge advantage. So because I run a legitimate insurance company, we are off able to offer real solutions to consumers looking for insurance products like life insurance and whatever else. So my guess, uh, if we could fast forward a year, my guess is that the insurance products that we offer will be the highest ROI when compared to the display ads and affiliate links, but it'll also most likely require the most time and energy to take care of the logistics of it. So we'll see how that plays out in the future. So these are the results so far. Let's take a look at it. So it looks like from Google Search Console's perspective, the website posts started around January 11th. Um, the total clicks is 68. Uh, this one here, it's an anomaly uh, that may have been a guest blog or something like that. People trying to solicit more backlinks from us. But nonetheless, the impressions uh, are what excite me because they're going up pretty steadily. I like this trend. It's looking good. We're over about 600 impressions now. Um, our queries... We can look here, we can sort these. Um, like I said, live transfer auto insurance leads <clears throat> was the one video I did. Uh, that's the cluster that I'm focusing on with the YouTube. Um, and you can tell the impressions on it, 5,800 compared to 800, da da da. Big difference. Um, on top of that, a lot of these ones are based upon insurance leads. Uh, which is that same cluster I did the YouTube videos on. So, like I said, that an experiment within an experiment is pretty interesting. The average click-through rate is is not good, but what do you expect? The website has only begun. Um, and the average position is slowly climbing. Everything is indexed at this point. We have no issues with uh, things like site speed. It's extremely fast. Let's jump into that. So this is based upon one of our blog posts, uh, New York Life Insurance Agent Salary. It's very typical, and we are scoring an 84. Our SEO is 100, best practice is 92, and accessibility 95. There's some things we need to tweak, but overall, I don't know how to get this better. This is extremely good for mobile. Desktop is 99 out of 100. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of people, when they run these, make sure to run it on an actual blog post if you have a content website. That's what matters. The homepage will render much differently uh, than a blog post because just a different structure. So the dev did a great job creating this and Astro Pro is a good foundation to build upon. It says some things like the, the foreground, background and foreground colors do not match. 
Um, I'm probably going to tweak that a bit to make it better. Why not? If Google says do it, uh, take Google's lead, right? Uh, some links do not have discernible names. This is based upon related posts. But the SEO is 100. Uh, so that is the Google site speed, which is looking great. On top of that, these are some of the backlinks that we have acquired. We mentioned Haro. So in Surify, they, uh, they, they featured us, featured me in one of their articles, or two of their articles, rather, which is great. Uh, HarfordChamber.org is another one that was the local chamber of commerce. Uh, and there's a few in here that were existing from the previous website. Um, Fixed app is a great one. We have 51 articles on their website because I was an author uh, for their articles on a 50 or so. And they were kind enough to give us a backlink, which helps everyone's EAT uh, because we push to them as well and give them a link to show that I was an author on there. So it's signaling to Google uh, we are experts in this field. At least that's the hope. Something else I wanted to mention was our schema workup. Uh, this is not a result, rather a, a thing we did that I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, we took extra time to create an organizational schema, uh, pointing out to very specific things that um, I have expertise and our team has expertise in the insurance field, such as what is the NAICS that this person, me, Jesse Cunningham, is an expert in, and this is an insurance agent. Uh, knows about these things, knows about insurance, is the same as all of these links, although Google, I know schema, Google no longer, they say they don't care about social profiles and same as, uh, but nonetheless, we're putting it in there and then has these credentials. So we built out a very, very large organizational schema to show Google, to force feed them what we're all about. So this is the first progress video for boppled.com. We're trying to be as transparent as possible to inform the community of what works, what doesn't. We're going to learn a lot through this project. We're going to spend a lot of money and have fun with it. But hopefully not only our team can learn, but you can learn too. Um, if you have any questions, shoot them in the comments. And if you have any ideas, do that as well. That'd be cool. Um, make sure to subscribe and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.